All right, you ready? I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Now we're ready. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, James with Newbie Drone here, and today I have Kyle, AKA SD Surf and Sand Team Pilot, introducing his new frame, the Newbie Drone Silverfish. So the Silverfish is a 240 millimeter Stretch X racing carbon fiber frame. As you can see, this is a pretty unique frame that Kyle himself has actually been working for a while to design. So Kyle, can you give us a little insight on why it's designed like this? And it's it's pretty unique. So can you go over some why you designed it and why it's like this and why it's different from other stuff? Basically, the idea behind this frame was I wanted to get the battery as neutral as possible. What that does is it allows the center of gravity to rotate around the battery rather than on top or below the battery. Keeps everything in line with the props and just gives you that, that nice locked in on edge feeling. I wasn't satisfied with how most frames were uh, or are uh, currently with either. You really only get the top mount, the super top mount, or the, the bottom mount, but they're really, I haven't really seen any frames that have been able to really put the battery right in the center of the frame. And that's kind of what we set out to do with this frame. So the Silverfish comes in this nice black matte box and we've got some kind of glossy black text. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see that in the video. And then we've got this nice, uh, chrome silver for the actual Silverfish logo. And uh, let's kind of like just dive into the box and see what you're gonna get out of the box. It comes in a nice, like you said, nice packaging. Um, it's not too bulky. So when I first opened the box, um, you can see the, the part count is actually very minimal, um, which is also very nice. You know, you don't want a frame with a ton of parts. So um, we have a nice battery pad right here uh, that's gonna that's sticky on top. So it's actually gonna keep your battery nice and locked in with, uh, keep it from sliding back and forth. And then right here we have a really nice 3D printed, actually laser printed um, camera mount. Um, and uh, you'll see how this uh, fits in later. Here is your hardware packet, rubber, um, grommets or spacers I should say uh, that go with the arms um, you have some nice gold standoffs uh, you know we got to stay with the uh, color scheme here and then um, you got your uh, your screws here and I should note that these are actually stainless steel screws no aluminum here um, so it's going to be nice and strong and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, these things cracking when you uh, when you crash next we have the arms um, and you can see that they are actually chamfered here on the edges so it gives it that nice saw you know that nice just finished look here is the main part of the quad um, these are your, this is your top plate this is your bottom plate and then this is the very top plate that ties everything in together. So one thing that's kind of nice about this kit is, I know there's a lot of new kits been coming out recently. A lot of them are nice, but when they're nice, they're also very complicated and they have yes. tons of parts. Cool thing about this is you got your arms, you got your basic frame, hardware, and then camera mount, that's it. There's tons of frames that while they're really nice and stuff, it's just very complicated and can be kind of intimidating if you're just getting into the hobby or you know, it's it's just a lot more things to replace or to crash and just brings up the cost. Where, uh, how much are we charged for this kit? 74.99. That's right. So um, not not a bad price. You know, it's uh, definitely not one of the most expensive frames on the market for what you're getting and stuff, and for how unique this is. 74.99. That's not a bad price. You know, it's definitely uh, a lot more reachable for a lot more uh, people than a lot of frames that are over that hundred dollar you know barrier. And especially when you're getting these nice custom molded pieces and stuff, where a lot of kits are just like machine cut carbon. So I noticed in this frame, you've got this uh, pretty unique dampening, like actually pretty crazy heavy duty dampening. I don't know if you guys can see that, but. Uh, um, there's uh, rubber dampeners on the bottom and on the top, so I know a lot Soften of kids. all the things. Right, yeah. I know a lot of uh, kids claim they're you know very good for vibration dampening, but you don't see a lot of kits that have this like dedicated top and sandwich, you know, ice cream sandwich um, style with the right. dampening. So why don't you uh, talk to us a little bit about that and you know how that came into the part of the design? One of the uh, ideas from the beginning was you know how can we stop the, all the vibrations getting too 
the, the flight controller. Back when we started working on this over a year ago, um, it was, most people were just 3D printing, you know, TPU um, arm mounts or, you know, TPU spacers um, to put on the, on the arms underneath the motors. And that was kind of like the, when people first started doing them, uh, had the idea of doing vibration dampening. Right. Oh, let's put it under the motors, it'll stop it from coming down the arm. Well, that works to a certain, a certain extent. Um, with this particular frame, um, due to its unique design and how we, to, get, to keep the deck so low, we thought, well, we're gonna need spacers. Why don't we, why don't we have a built-in vibration dampening system here? Um, hence the, the sandwich, the arm sandwich idea here with these rubber, uh, rubber spacers. I should say they aren't super soft, so it's not like, you know, squishy, you know, squishy rubber. It's more uh, if you're uh, back in the, you know, with skateboards, you would you have a spacer, rubber spacer between the, the truck trucks and, and the, the deck. Right. Um, that's basically the same idea. Can you use this for skateboarding? I'd like to see you try. So what that allowed us to do was basically so soft mount these arms in such a way that it provides the space needed for the flight controller and stop, um, isolate the vibrations coming from, you know, or potential vibrations coming from your your motors. Right, because you see a lot of uh, frames talking about how they want to, you know, isolate the dampening just with the flight controller by using grommets or something like that. Right, exactly. But you're taking it to a whole new extreme level where you've got, you know, double layers on each individual arm, so that's probably exactly. a lot more effective than just having it where the actual flight controller mounts to the board, because exactly. not only do you have this, but you can also do that as well, so then you've got even more more layers of vibration dampening. Right. Especially if you're running like a super high KV motors where I know the magnets are pretty strong and they're mm -hmm. not as smooth as like lower freestyle exactly. motors. Exactly. So, you know, even more of a benefit for that. Yeah, that we want to stop the vibrations getting to the flight controller altogether. And you'll see later, once we uh, deconstruct this, you'll see how that really all ties in together. Listen. So as you guys can see, this is actually a pretty unique frame when it comes to mounting the flight controller. You're not going to be running super high stacks or anything. For this one, you're going to want to run a flight controller that's a all-in-one type. So you're going to fit it in the space down here. And then you'll want to run like, you know, individual ESCs. We're going to have Kyle take this apart and show you it with a flight controller mounted in there. Ideally, how you would want to set it up. All right. So we got the... Uh the top top plate off here. Uh, this is your uh, 3D printed camera mount here, which we, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll see this later. But basically, it just slides over these uh, standoffs here. Just pull this top plate off here. You can see here that I already have uh, some. I'm actually using plastic um, plastic screws uh, because, like I said earlier, there's nothing uh, that the flight controller is not bolted into the arm so you don't it doesn't need to be necessarily strong or super strong um, and depending on your flight controller or your setup everyone's gonna be a little bit different um, will depend on what you use here but um, for me I'm using these plastic these plastic screws you'll notice that this particular FC actually comes with um, the rubber dampening uh, like we were talking about earlier we already have the rubber dampening here but this is gonna go ahead and further um, isolate any other any other vibrations using um, using these uh, and on this particular build I even have another rubber grommet here so I'm essentially taking away all vibrations possible uh, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, go ahead and slide this on you notice that the uh, that the power um, the the ground and the positive are are on the back here and we'll just go ahead and pop this on here Another thing I'd like to point out about Kyle's frame is that you can see, even though we have this pretty big flight controller for what it is, this DYS, you know, all in one, uh, if you look closely, you can see it's it's cut out to fit even bigger flight controllers in there. So if there's, you know, other brands that you're looking at doing, or, you know, it's even kind of future proofing in case they come out with bigger boards that have, you know, more features and stuff. We kind of made sure there's enough space so that you can fit a good majority of it in there for stuff like that. Now we've got the frame back together with the flight controller just put in there so you can kind of get a reference to how it looks when it's installed in there. Let's see if you guys can see that, but yeah, there we go. Pretty, pretty tight little fit, but you know, it's, a, it's about like kind of saving space on this. You know, most flight controllers you're getting nowadays have a lot of all-in-one functionality built in, so you don't need room for a giant stack that generally wastes a lot of space. 
You can also see that uh, you know you still have you still have access to your USB port, uh, and actually on this particular one, we still have oh, what would you say, a couple millimeters on on each side. I don't know. I never learned how to count. A lot of people they run their uh, for bottom mounted stuff, uh, their straps under the flight controller, and I know with this frame you can either run the battery up here or mm -hmm. on the bottom. Uh, so. I'll go ahead and uh, we have a battery here. It's a Nitro Nectar 1500. Wow, I heard oh. that's the best kind. Fantastic. So what I do personally is this is the, I found this is the best way to keep the wires from getting hit from the prop, um, is that we uh, take, the, take the lead of the battery and we slide it in the front here. And then this just slides all the way up like that. And the battery sits nice and snug right in here. Look at that, you got the battery directly inside the middle of the frame. Usually on you know on frames like this, you got it set on the top. And what I think is kind of a cool feature about this is it brings a lot of the uh, the weight to the matter. So you go uh, middle, middle, so you have a good center of mass. Whereas you know with a lot of top mounted batteries, you'll have it on the very top. So it's very light on the bottom, but then you have this huge battery weight on the top. So it's kind of not super even. Right, so. exactly. My personal favorite way to mount the battery on Kyle's frame is actually running the battery on the bottom. And you might think, well, why are you going to do that? Then you'll have a big gap right there and there'll be a bunch of empty space, right? Right. So, actually, you use a GoPro Session. I've got a Hero Session 5 right here. And then we have this nice TPU printed uh, case and it's just got the GoPro at an angle. And then you can see it's got a little gap in the bottom right there for the strap to run through. And this case is perfectly fitted so you can actually just pop it in there and set it to sit level, and then bam, you've got the GoPro mounted right there. And the cool thing about this is, instead of having the GoPro sitting on the very front, hanging up, you know, which makes the weight of the copter be a lot in the front, and then raises the uh, center of mass, you've got it all in the center right there. So you're kind of staying in the theme with the frame as much as you can for a GoPro mount. And then you would just mount the battery on the bottom right there, and you would run the strap through the bottom of this TPU mount, and then over the bottom of the battery, and you're all set, and you can fly it like that. And I personally think that's really cool. But you know, if you're going for just racing where you're not worried about HD footage, then you just you know throw it on the top right there in, in the center, and bam, you got yep, the best right performance possible right there. So that's a short overview of our brand new Newbie Drone Silverfish, which is our team pilot Kyle's signature frame. If you guys have any questions or comments or want to know more, you can check the video description below or go on our website, newbiedrone.com, where you can purchase this. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. And uh, make sure to go buy one. Yes, you won't be disappointed. I hope not. I don't disappoint. Ladies. <laughs>